if you like me, I use uh, magnetic screwdrivers all the time. And trying to put the uh, Eclipse on with magnetic screwdrivers, sometimes the magnetic screwdrivers will pull like your washer out of the way or, you know, when you get the Eclipse in position and you think it's going to be in position and then you go to move it a little bit, the magnetic screwdriver will, will draw it out of the way and then all your hard work is wasted. And so you grab a different screwdriver and come to find out it's also magnetic also. Uh, wooden dowels work really well for once you get the E-clip where you want it, you take and push the E-clip on with a wooden dowel. And that's why chopsticks, you know, I, I love Chinese uh, food and I go out to Chinese restaurants and I buy chop. I don't buy they give me chopsticks if you ask for them there's a pair here's another pair I used I have a few pairs of chopsticks and so um, this is uh, just a different kind this is for people who don't know how to um, eat Chinese food and so that's why it has it that way. Or some people use a rubber band um, to help you use the Chinese chopsticks. But anyway, the chopsticks work really well for working on clocks. And that's why I keep them in my house. And that's why I take a pair when I go out to eat uh, Chinese food. You can sharpen them. You can uh, 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 clean out the pivot holes with the chopsticks. Um, they work better than toothpicks sometimes uh, and you can also go out and buy them at the you could buy these like right here these barbecue skewers these great big toothpicks I bought these at the Dollar Tree back when the Dollar Tree was a dollar and so anyway getting back to this clock um, I'm going to count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. 10, 11, 12, 13. Did you see that? We'll do it again. One, two, three. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Why does it hit thirteen times? I'll explain that in a second. People say that the rack and snail system went. And uh, the rack and snail system, you could turn the hands backwards. You can. At times. However, if your clock is in cuckoo clock mode, like this, and now you turn the hands backwards, you're going to bend things. You know, you have to imagine there's a set of... There's some hands on here. And you turn this backwards, things are going to bend. When I turn this backwards, you know, it's in the cuckoo clock mode. I'm turning the hands backwards. What is going, what is going on with me turning the hands backwards? I'm going to explain that. This, because of the weight, is putting pressure on the the teeth of the rack this is at the snail and so you're you're bending things something is going to give and typically what gives is the separation distance between this arm and this arm and that's why this cuckoo 
cuckoos 13 times is because the separation distance between this lever and this lever is not correct. You can turn the hands backwards. This is a perfect um, opportunity to turn the hands backwards because it is not in cuckoo mode. But once it gets in cuckoo mode, on certain time spans, such as the 12 o'clock, and you go to turning hands backwards here I'm turning the hand backwards something is going to give you know so never tell your people that buy clocks yeah you could turn the hands backwards because they did not hear that you could turn the hand backwards if it's not in cuckoo clock mode or yeah, you could turn the hand backwards if the hands are at the 10 o'clock position. They didn't hear that. What they heard was they said I could turn the hand backwards if it's not properly set. So Again, do not tell your people to turn the hand backwards. They don't know enough about clocks to know when not to turn the hand backwards. Again, case in point, this thing cuckoos 13 times. Do it again. Again, I have to hold this lever up. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 10, 11, 12. In that case, it was fine. But it's not, it wasn't all the way down. You can also see there's different, there's worn out procedures on this uh, snail. There's, there's worn out sections on this snail. So if it's here, it cuckoos 13 times. Here, it's a little bit higher. It'll cuckoo 12 times. But getting back to my point, the reason why a clock cuckoos 13 times is because the distance between here and here is not where it needs to be. And so um, you have to, uh, and because we're on the subject, I'm just going to show you. I'm going to squeeze this thing in. Okay, and now it's cuckooing 15 times or 18 times or whatever because it dropped too far. I hope that showed you what I'm trying to explain to you is the distance between this arm and this arm has to be just right or it's going to cuckoo or it's not going to cuckoo enough. In some cases, if it's spread too much, it might only cuckoo 10 times on the 12 o'clock position. Now I have to fix this. So again, if your clock is striking 13, as I talked about before, this lever needs to go into one of these notches. If your clock is striking 13, try bending this tab 
instead of having it at a 90 degree, bend it out so it's at maybe a 120, 110 degree as looking at it uh, from the top like this. Because when you do, now it this lever falls into its slot. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. I'm not happy with that. The uh, tab. For the. Um, I'm gonna try it again. Work fine that time. Before I start bending things. The tab for the rack stop lever that releases the cuckoo bird locking lever might not be bent down enough, which I don't believe it is, so I'm going to bend it down some. And again, That's what happens when you turn hands backwards. I'm happy with that. I'm not happy with that. I put a lot of pressure on things when I'm doing a function test. That way, if I'm doing, putting a lot of pressure on it doing a function test, when you put a weight that is supposed to um, go on the clock, then you know it should work. And that's why um, uh, Sometimes my thumbs get all chewed up. I'm going to put a chain and a weight on this to see if it's going to function properly because with a bunch of pressure, it functions properly. But with less pressure, it 
doesn't function properly it wants to cuckoo a couple extra times and so I'm gonna put a chain and wait on it and see if it functions properly again you want to do all this stuff before you put it back into the case so you don't have to take it back out and figure out why it's not cuckooing properly there were a few things wrong with it um, the the tab that hits this lever here to release it wasn't bent enough um, the snail was in the wrong position I had to rotate that um, and the lip lock lever didn't have enough separation distance on it to make it cuckoo on the half hour I know right so now when I turn it around we should be good to go At 11 o'clock position here. My thumb is sore from doing all this. Eleven thirty. Twelve o'clock position. And you see where the um tap dropped it dropped more in the middle than on the uh, end so one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve and so um 12.30 position coming up. My fingers are just in a way too much. And 1 o'clock position coming up. see it falls into the slot so one o'clock position if you see it again this tab is closer to the left versus to the very end to the right and this falls into the slot for the one o'clock position and so anyway um Next step is I got to find the E-clip to put on there, then the chains, and then uh, uh, putting this thing on a stand. Um, if you guys watch uh, Mike, just Mike, Michael Anderson's YouTube channel, he's got the little feet that he puts on here, and then he uh, uh, puts those feet on the back side of the movement or on the front side of the movement, hangs them on the wall. Believe it or not, I got those feet now. Um, I just don't have the uh, area to hang it on my wall. And, but I still have the stand that I have made. So I'm going to um, run this for a, a day or two until I feel like working on this thing again. And... Um, and making sure that everything is working properly. I hope you guys are enjoying this video set. God bless. 
Here I have the uh, movement back in after I um, did my function test. Everything was working. The movement was working fine. And I want to discuss if your cuckoo bird is not closing. There's a few things that could be wrong with it. First of all, let's see if I can. If this bird uh, locking lever, which is right here that we discussed in the other video if it's not releasing that could be wrong plus there's a lot of stuff that could be in the way of the bird such as this lever right here this wire right here there's a lot that could stop the bird from closing all the way so, uh, you need to look at the back of the movement and see what's going on as to why the bird doesn't want to close uh, the door all the way. Like I said, there's this cuckoo bird rod locking lever that could make him stick out. There's this wire. There's this lever here. If the wire that is attached to the cuckoo door, if it's bent wrong, then that could be it. But look at the back of the movement and make sure that there's nothing wrong with stopping the bird from closing all the way. I still have to uh, repair the bellows. But we are getting there. Uh, everything seems to be functioning properly. Working on the uh, music box. Uh, first of all, this thing was filthy and rusty. And the click wheel here is... This is the way it ratchets, and this is slipping, so I'm going to have to fix that. Um, the way you fix that is this star washer, we'll call it. It, the fingers need to be bent down to put more pressure on it because I shouldn't be able to turn this. This is the way the chain pulls and it is slipping on the system. Um, I took my wire brush to this thing. You know, the person that fixed this before <clears throat> I don't know what kind of clock repair people they are, but they got solder here. It's just, it's all nasty. And this is the governor wheel. And I'm in the process of taking my wire brush to it, but there is some kind of green gunk on it, which is preventing it from doing its preventing it from functioning so uh i'm gonna take a wire brush and clean it all up but i'm cleaning it all up it's already working better already but there's a bunch of junk on here. So, with my wire brush in hand, cleaning all the teeth just like I did 
with the drum, the music drum, to get all that gunk out that's in it. So I'm going to continue doing that. Now this is the uh, ratchet wheel and this is the the click. There's this wire right here that attaches to the click that comes up into this hole right here. And then you have to uh, uh, put the click down. But this, this click might be worn out. I need to look at it under a magnifying light. I'm going to uh, put it back on. I cleaned it up with the wire brush. I'm going to put it back on. And uh, in order to do that, you have to kind of push the click out of the way as you put it back on from the teeth. which I got it put back on but this click is worn out it's um I'll see if I can manipulate the wire some to make it tighter I'm trying to do this over a magnifying glass and over this camera is the challenge for me I'm trying to show y'all what I'm doing and let's see if that helps I'm still able to turn it so I'm try it one more time squeezing that wire to make it tighter that don't work I'm gonna have to find a different ratchet wheel it might be the click itself is worn out some I might be able to uh, make the tooth Um, grab more by grinding it off or filing it off and yeah it's it's not grabbing so I'm going to see if I can uh 
cut away some of this, uh, make a sharper angle on that click to see if I can get it to grab the teeth better. This is what the click looks like right now. And I'm going to try to grind it um, to make it look uh, at a different angle. Hopefully, with it having a sharper tooth, we'll grab those teeth on this wheel better. I pulled the wire this way some also. Let's see if I can put this all back together now. Trying to do this so y'all could see it. It's better, but it's still slipping. So, uh, let's see if I can find another wheel. Get into my uh, bag of music parts. Um, that's a different setup right here with that spring but it works and so I will be taking this one off to uh, put on here and you know the only thing I don't like about the music boxes for Cuckoo Clocks is the parts. You shouldn't have to buy um, new governors. at $45 a set or you shouldn't have to buy this piece right here which is $15 this arm right here with this gear when a lot of these come with the plastic gears this gear right here plastic and it cracks and which causes uh, problems with your music box I bet if I went to Switzerland and walked into a, a clock repair shop, I could buy a whole bag of these plastic gears. But not here in the United States. You have to spend $15 on this shaft or buy a whole new governor assembly at around $45. And that's why I say when you're out and about, you're at a yard sale or whatever, and you see a music box, uh, it's made in Germany. I've got a video where I bought a music box for $2 off a of marketplace. And then it cost me another $10 to have it shipped. And so for $12, I got 
the comb, which a lot of times the dampers on these combs are missing. Yes, you can repl buy replacement dampers, but then you have to glue them onto the comb. And I've never done it, but I bet it's a pain in the butt. And so I got the, this, I got the bolts, and I got a governor assembly um, for the music box I got. But the music box was only $2. If I was in that area, I could have got that music box for $2. But I had it shipped. And so... What I'm getting at is if you're out and about at a yard sale, plea market, whatever, check out the music boxes because they might have available parts that you can use on these uh, cuckoo clocks with music boxes. So anyway, this wheel works. It's not slipping. And so it's time to put the governor back onto this assembly. I did oil the pivots just like you would in a movement. There's this pivot, this pivot, this pivot, this pivot, this top pivot here. And then this bottom pivot. I also put a drop of oil inside here for the drum. And uh, I need to uh, put a drop of oil right there. Now I have a video on repairing music boxes or adjusting music boxes. I have a whole bunch of videos on adjusting music boxes, but when, when you put the governor on, you want to find the sweet spot in the, the music. You want the, uh, you want to get the, be able to turn the barrel easily so the gears are turning and not slipping and once you find that sweet spot that's when you tighten down your screws and then try it again and then tighten down your um, uh, if, if it's not working properly you'll have to loosen the screws and do it all over again And then you hook up a chain to it to make sure it's working with the chain. Here in this case, I think the fan blade is up too high because the way the music box works is the this wheel makes the fan go up and if the fan blade is up too high it's going to stop your your music from playing so i need to adjust it all but like i said i have a i have a video on this entire system and sometimes it's easier to take the governor fan itself out to uh, be able to adjust the governor and just uh, I find it you can uh, find the sweet spot easier with the fan on um, sometimes it's harder to do and here is our first test.
you notice it the lever went into the hole I got the wire off the lever that way it doesn't get stuck this is the wire that um, that goes into this hole right here but anyway I had it off that way it was easier to adjust everything now for the second test put a chain and a weight on here to see if it's working properly now it would have a 320 weight on uh, typically but I have a 275 weight on right now because that's the weight that I grabbed As you can see, it's working just fine. Here I had the uh, movement for the music box screw back to the board and put back into the top of the case. And before I uh, glue and staple the top of the the roof of the case down I want to make sure that the that the girl is going to go back inside and so I'm just going to temporarily put this uh, roof onto the uh, onto the main part of the clock Whoever worked on this clock before, and a, this is the only second farmer's daughter's clock that I have ever touched, but in my opinion, uh, they got it messed up because there is no way that this girl can come back. Um, into the clock because they don't have it set right this is the video where I'm working on my friends he's smacking Becker farmer's daughter's clock and watch it and I'll explain and as you can see She's hooked to the in this wheel music box that this wire fits in when she's all done. And what was happening was the so my clock because she's connected to the main part of the case, I don't see it. I don't see how she could come back into the case after the music is done. They have uh, this door doesn't close properly the way she is. They got her stapled to this piece of wire and so I'm gonna see if I can find some other clocks, but I think that this wire needs to come off of this board and she needs to be attached to the music box like she is in this video. And the reason why they did that is because this platform is different 
and it's broken off here. Remember, I was telling you that they soldered it. And so, instead of them fixing it right, they stapled that wire to the housing of the clock. And so, the way she's set up now, there's no way possible that she could come back into the case unless there's a way that I don't know of, which is possible. You know, maybe Schmeckenbecker made two different styles of this clock and this is one style the gear was in the wrong spot so she came out she closed she went back in and because this gear was in the wrong spot she came back out again on top of this and then this particular gear has got this screw right here and I'm going to go ahead and loosen it for you so you can see what I'm talking about she came out and so now I'm going to have to see if I could find a different uh, casting uh, uh, for the music box that has this section right here so I can put that wire through her, that hole and set it up the way this music box is set up. Here's one on eBay that's selling for $132. But as you can see, it's missing the farmer. It's missing the, the lover. The ladder's broke. It's missing a few things. But I just want to show you, and you see all the damage it's got. Here's that wire. It's connected to the music box, and then it's connected to her. Just like in the uh, uh, typical uh, clocks with the little man that comes out, this platform right here will work and there's the hole that she's connected to will work for what I need here's some that have sold this one sold for $399.95 plus $37.92 in shipping this one sold for $222.50 plus $25 in 80 in shipping. Here's one that sold for 235 plus 20 in shipping. Here's one that sold for 150 or best offer free shipping. Here's one that sold for 200 plus shipping. Um, it's, some of these can be quite expensive. 300 plus shipping. Here's one that sold for $455 to include shipping. So, um, and here's one that sold for 100 bucks plus $14.50 in shipping, but it needs quite a bit of work. It's missing the guy. Let me get to it. It's missing the, the guy, the lover, and to find parts for these things um, can be an issue. So, um, but on the average, they sell between around three hundred dollars 
um, in working order. You notice all these are repair, parts are repair. And this one doesn't see whether it's working or not. This one works and runs good, but it's sold for about $300 to include shipping. This one is probably one of the best out there. And let me get to it. As you can see, it is in really good shape. I have seen them sell for $800. I personally think a drug deal was involved in that, but anyway, um, let me get back to this one. I want to show you if they have a picture of it. Again, you can see this girl uh, I shouldn't have zoomed I shouldn't have clicked on the pictures. Um I wanted to show you anyway, she's connected to the music box. So that's what I'm gonna have to do. So, after broaching the hole and straightening out the wire, shoving the wire through here and bending the wire and then having uh, an angle to fit into the um, 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 chain wheel ratchet here, we now have a lady that will come out the door and go back in the door. But, I'm going to have to probably do some more bending on this lever uh, once I get this music box um, back into the roof of the clock because I don't know exactly how it's bent. So, this is the way it's supposed to work and not the way they had it. This housing here, like I said, for almost, well, for every clock where the little man comes out, it has this section here, um, because that's how the little man comes out. So why they didn't fix the clock right in the first place... I have no idea, but we are getting there, and, but now I have to, I think the music might be the same, I'm not really for sure, um, I'm going to have to check that out, I might have to replace the music drum. Um, I don't know whether this is the correct music drum to start with. And whether this tune is different from this tune. That would be the end of it. There's a part number of some sort on here. Let's see if I can see what it says. It says three four three two one five. And let's see if there's a part number on this one. It says 
three four three two one and I don't believe there's the last number there is a five so it's the same part number but whether it's the same music notes or not that is the question so let's compare I don't think it is. I'm getting it to the end of the song. So I can hear the beginning of the song. So... That was that song. And let me get this to the end, end of the song so I can hear the beginning of the song. Went too far. Maybe, but uh, this one's louder than this one, and so um, I might go with this one. Anyway. Um, I hope y'all are enjoying this video. I hope y'all hit the subscribe button and leave me comments. But uh, I think that's enough for tonight. We'll do some more later.